When Danny Ocean is granted parole from prison, he promptly breaks the rules of his release by going to California to meet with his business partner and friend Rusty Ryan and make a deal. They both go to Las Vegas to tell Ruben Tishkoff, a wealthy former casino owner and another one of Ocean's acquaintances, about the scheme. The Bellagio Casino, Mirage Casino, and MGM Grand Casino will all be simultaneously robbed. Ruben doesn't really want to take part because he is aware with the casino security system, but as he starts to consider the robbery as a method to avenge his adversary Terry Benedict, who owns all three casinos, Ruben decides to finance the operation. Before placing significant bets, casinos are required by law to have enough cash on hand to cover all of their patrons' wages. The group projects that before the major boxing event, there will be more than $160 million in the Bellagio vault. Eight former co-workers and criminal experts are hired by Danny and Rusty. Amazing Ian, a great acrobat, Virgil and Turk Malloy, two talented mechanics, Livingston Dell, an electronics and surveillance specialist, Bash Attar, an expert in explosives, Saul Bloom, an experienced con man, and young and talented pickpocket Linus Caldwell. Some of the team members scout the Bellagio to find out as much as they can about the building's security, operating procedures, and staff members' conduct. Others build a precise copy of the vault to test potential breaches of complex security measures. The crew learns that Tess, Danny's ex-wife, has started dating Benedict during this planning stage. They begin the procedure. Danny travels to the Bellagio to meet Benedict, who, as was to be predicted, locks him in the security room and beats him with a bouncer by the name of Brazier. But Brazier, another of Danny's friends, assists him in making his way out of the ventilation shaft so that he may meet his team in the vault. Linus identifies himself as a representative of the Gaming Commission and informs Benedict that Ramon Escalante, one of his workers, is actually Frank Catton, an ex-con. In front of Benedict, Linus and Frank struggle so that Linus can steal the vault access codes that were written on a piece of paper and discovered in Benedict's jacket. The Malloy brothers transport Gina into the vault inside of a little object so she can help blast the door open from the inside. In order to let Linus and Danny utilize the elevator shaft, Basha switches on a stolen amp, electrical suppression device, temporarily knocking off electricity in the casino. Rusty uses the cell phone that Danny had earlier hidden in Tess's coat to call Benedict in an incognito manner, as Benedict seeks to get things back to normal following the power outage. Rusty informs Benedict that the vaults are being broken into, and that if he doesn't lend a hand, all the money would be lost. He needs to make arrangements to put half the cash in a van that is waiting outside. Benedict decides to move the money after reviewing the vault videos, which show that Rusty's claims are accurate. However, he instructs his men to follow the van once he departs and summons Swat to secure the vault and the other half of the money. The half of the money that was still in the vault is torched as a result of the firefight that ensues once the Swat squad arrives. Benedict insists that the Swat squad depart after persuading him that the casino is no longer in threat. Following the van, Benedict's men find out that it is remote controlled and is filled with duffel bags full with leaflets offering prostitutes rather than money. Benedict notices that the vault floor in the clip lacks the Bellagio emblem, which was recently put in place, and concludes that the film he saw was pre-recorded. Going back in time, the plot reveals that Danny produced the funny video Benedict witnessed using a duplicate of the vault. The rest of the crew responded to Benedict's request for police assistance by dressing as SWAT officers and stealing all the money from the safe. When Benedict later goes back to the room where he left Danny, he discovers that Danny is still there and appears to be still being beaten by Brazier, so Benedict is left without any evidence connecting Danny to the theft. When Tess passes via the surveillance cameras, Danny connives to get Benedict to propose giving up all the thieves and the money in exchange for Tess. Danny claims he was joking, but Benedict swears he's right. Danny has breached his parole by visiting Las Vegas, so Benedict instructs his men to remove him away from the scene and report the incident to the authorities. Just in time to observe Danny being taken into custody, Tess leaves Benedict and checks out of a hotel. The other members of the group who have money depart one by one in different directions, 